Good morning, folks. We've got some terrific eye candy today. Also, some serious alerts for parts of the world. Top science articles of the day as well sprinkled on top as we begin at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star was mostly quiet except for some motion top right. I'm going to speed that up and zoom in so you can see a spreading motion. The northern filaments we saw days ago lifted and caught magnetic fields flowing out, and that was the CME we saw leaving near the departing active region yesterday. As I mentioned, this one is not heading at Earth at all. A quick look at the solar wind shows a stabilization of the plasma stream and a reduction of the brief geomagnetic instability from the hours before. We're on to weather. Delta getting closer in the Gulf as the Yucatan gets hammered. Most models in agreement right now on the hurricane's track. But we've also got one approaching Japan. And on the QuakeWatch.net Earthquake Prediction Center, there's a lot happening in that region. We do have a typhoon that is set to nestle up near the southern Japanese coastlines and sit there for a couple of days. This is a strong atmospheric component of the global electric circuit discharge in this region, and the red patch on the risk map we saw just before this was the blot echo signature, energy in the deep, waiting to be accessed. Moving on to our first science story of the day, and it's Dr. Svalgard from Stanford. He is one of the best and most experienced of the top solar physics crowd, and he is delivering another forecast for similar solar activity to the last cycle, if not maybe a bit more. As I've mentioned time and time again, it does look like that's going to be accurate based on the solar polar field's power and what we've seen so far here in the early stages of cycle 25. Up next, we've got the results from the NRAO's creative contest, Honorable mention here using multiple data streams to visualize Jupiter. And here is a clip from the winner, who obviously has computer capabilities most of us do not have. Nevertheless, have to give the winner an additional two thumbs up from the observers for sticking with normal matter, plasma, and radiation in the visualization. Lastly, folks, let's remember back in late August, they made the prediction that one of the known nearby recurrent nova would soon go off again. This was based on variable observations and its recurrence cycle being almost due. This is describing the accretion or accumulation mechanism of a nova event. In the binary version of it, one star sucks material off of the other, clogging its stellar atmosphere and creating a runaway process of energy trapping and eventually the explosion of the star. We know of many that do it repeatedly, just like a shedding of the outer skin, but indeed sometimes the whole star ignites and there's nothing left in the aftermath. Here, they are attempting to identify exactly those stars, ones with close binaries which should be triggered by the interactions in the most titanic ways. It should be noted that I disfavor strictly spectral analysis to determine the presence of a second star, as they've done here. I say, see it, or don't presume it's there. I do, however, presume that this does exist a lot out there in space, but more importantly, the mechanism works in other ways, including intermittently, sporadically, if your star is unlucky enough to run into a dense gas cloud, or you happen to cross the galactic current sheet gas and dust accumulation while experiencing the galactic magnetic field reversal within the sheet. It does appear that we are inside that sheet now, awaiting the crescendo as the stars go off in a line towards the Earth and all the planets show signs of a magnetic change. It's a 150 to 200 year crossing in all approximation, just as Earth spends a few hours every week or so in the Sun's heliospheric current sheet, we spend about two centuries in the galactic version during the larger 12,000 year catastrophe cycle. A solar micronova resulting from that event is the only way to rectify the magnetic excursions, impactors, nova level isotopes, and rapid freezing events as the sun is blocked out by the remnant, not to mention the potential to have large bits of atmosphere blown away. It is the only way to explain all the pieces of evidence together, and the only way to trigger a G-class star before it explodes on its own at the end of its life is to change the near-space energetic and material environment ongoing now. More on this topic in our links below the video on our channel page or at our website. Take your pick. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.